Hello everyone. This is my dog, Princess Coco. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Are you willing to stay with me while my heart breaks? My heart is breaking right now because I am watching a friend in anguish. I'm keeping watch with her, standing witness with her, praying with her, singing to her. My friend is suffering. Andrew and Peter, James and John, Thomas and Matthew, Judas Iscariot, they too had a friend who was suffering. They had a friend who was anguishing. They had a friend that was in terror. How do you respond to your friends? See, Jesus found out how his friends responded to him when his life got messy. But first, he decided to teach them one final lesson from master to student. And he got down on bended knee and he picked up their feet one foot at a time and ever so gently he washed them. And he took time that night to wash 24 feet with his own two hands. And some feet were well cared for and other feet had calluses and cracks. Yet, other feet were caked with mud and dirt and dung and with all sorts of messy things. Yet Jesus wanted to teach them to never turn away from ugliness. What was Jesus trying to do with his friends? He was also trying to teach them to have the courage to look at what's ugly and to shed light in the darkness. And no matter how ugly things get, it is the trust and the love that helps to move us into the light. Jesus was able to look at the messiness about a person and not gloss over it, but love. Jesus was able to look at the ugliness of a person and not just tolerate it, but love. Jesus was able to turn his gaze on the deep hurt of a human being and not just witness it, but love. And as the light of the sun sank into darkness, Jesus was, it was left with the terror of death in his bones. Even through the terror, Jesus poured out love through his more important teaching. He wanted his disciples to be like him. He wanted his disciples to stop turning a blind eye and tolerate their own discomfort to stop cringing and to start loving, to stop ignoring and to start being present. He wanted his disciples to shine light in dark places. Because the disciples hadn't yet learned not to turn away, they didn't yet know how to shine their light. Jesus wanted to fill that gap. He wanted his disciples not to turn away from but to turn towards love and to stand with open hearts. Jesus says, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. I'm doing my best to hold the Christ light for my dear friend whom I can hear in a hushed whisper say, can you stay with me? Can you stay with me while my heart gets broken? Or am I going to be like Jesus, asking God to take this cup from me? See, Mary Magdalene is the one that stayed with Jesus the entire time when all the others ran away, would run away. They don't have the capacity to be present in Jesus, with, his, with Jesus in his suffering. But what if? 
What if your friend asks you, can you stay with me while my heart breaks? Are the disciples willing to sit at the foot of a cross and be broken into pieces? Will they be there with him? Mother Mary was willing to sit at the foot of the cross and be broken into pieces. Mother Mary was willing to take in the full power of her son's suffering so she could love. She allowed herself to witness his suffering so that she could give him love knowing that it was going to break her heart. Mary's discomfort may have been intolerable, but it was not nearly as powerful as her love for her son. Do you have the capacity to stay? My dear friend, I'll call her Geneva, has another friend that she has known for many, many years who can't be bothered to return a phone call. Geneva realizes that if she's not going to be the old friend they knew, that that nurturing presence they have come to rely on, the relationship is no longer useful to them. Yesterday, a different friend called. When my friend Geneva told her that her brother was missing, her friend reacted instantly and said, can you move? Can you move? You can't separate my friend from the people in her life whom she loves. Jennifer's friend wanted to separate Jennifer to keep her safe in order to make that friend comfortable. And a heart that loves is willing to wait. A heart that loves will look out for that person, that missing person. My friend is waiting for her beloved brother whom Geneva had the immense pleasure as a child of witnessing take his first steps. Her beloved brother whom she dedicated an entire photo album for when his team won their baseball championship. See, she is keeping watch. She is praying. She is singing. And she's calling, calling out his name in anguish. But what her other friend wanted for herself was to have a quick resolution that neatly tied up Geneva's troubles, the messiness of Geneva's life. And in effect, she has turned her head away from Geneva because she cannot stand to look at her suffering. She could not be with her in her suffering. It was not comfortable for her. In that one statement, she abandoned her friend and left her alone in her suffering. Addressing her discomfort was more important than addressing her friend's suffering. In fact, she went as far to ask her friend if there was anything she could do for her, to which the friend replied, can we please do our spiritual practices, our praying together? To which she agreed and then set the time. Then a call came to Geneva just a couple of hours before the scheduled appointment to say that the friend had to cancel. And it hurts my heart. It hurts my heart to hear my friend say, could she not stay awake with me for one hour? She couldn't even stay awake with me for five minutes. She put my suffering at arm's length as if Geneva was an afterthought. See, in these precious hours, the last hours of Jesus' life, his friends fell asleep on him. Could you not stay awake with me for one hour? In his darkest hour, Jesus was left all alone, and he cried out to God, let this cup pass from me. And like my friend, there is nothing left to do but to surrender. Not my will, but thine be done. It hurts my heart. It hurts my heart as I watch the process of surrender. It hurts my heart to watch my friend anguish as she is watching and waiting for her brother to come home. It hurts my heart to witness the pain that she must go through each day as her friends, one by one, run away from the pain they sense she must be feeling. And I also see how deeply grateful she is at the friends who do stay, the friends who hold prayers 
for her and her sibling and the teacher and the mentor. See, Jesus is alone. He's waiting. He's crying out to God, please take this cup from me. Not my will, but thine be done. And in the midst of this poignant surrender to God's will, he has friends who are with him, but who have fallen asleep. It's like they're there, they're just there in body alone. The significance here is that this is the most important hour. When Jesus' life got messy, his disciples weren't there for him. When Jesus' life got messy, his friends weren't there for him. When Jesus' life got messy, the ones whose feet he so willingly washed, the ones whom he loved, left him, left him alone in the dark. The same Jesus that got down and bended knee was teaching them, teaching them to not turn away when life gets ugly, teaching them to bring the light into darkness, teaching them to love what is messy, with open hearts. And as disciples of Christ, we too must turn towards the messy. We too must turn towards the ugly. We too must turn towards the suffering to bring light, to bring acceptance, and to bring love. Are you willing to stay? Are you willing to remain? Are you willing to watch and pray? <laughs>